You may have reached the point where you wonder if Git is still the best suited solution for some of your projects. This could happen when you have a lot of assets like data files, video, audio, images, 3D objects, compressed archives and anything that is binary instead of text and especially if these are big and very big files. For example, if you are working on a 3D project like a game or something involving gigabytes of data that have to be tracked and managed inside a repository. Git has been created for code, text files. Binary files are supported, but there are some downsides and all version control systems have to deal with them one way or another. All files in Git are stored as compressed blob objects, identified by a hash that has to be calculated based on the content inside it. If two files have the same content, the hash is the same for both and Git won't create duplicates to save space. If you start this empty repository and add a code file, then we can find the hash and the blob file like this. This is it and we can confirm by looking at what's inside. And we can also see where it is stored as a file on the disk. If we make a change and commit, another blob object is created with the new changes. We can also see the difference between these two commits because Git can use a tool that takes the files and returns what's changed. And there is the new object. And then we can add binary files like an image if it's not very big, the compression and hashing won't take that long, but still longer than the usual code file of a few kilobytes. This is where Git compressed and stored it. If we change this image with an image editor and commit, another blob object is created, of course. And now our repository is a little bigger. Now, let's suppose we have a big asset, like a 500 megabytes Blender scene. This is a binary object and as soon as we add it, it will create a compressed blob for it. You can notice how longer it takes for this file to be added. Let's find the blob object. It is a little bit smaller because it was compressed. Now, if you make a change to this Blender scene and we commit again, which will take its time. 
We have another blob object. After 10 changes and commits, our repository can become as big as 5 gigabytes. You push this repository, if you can, because at least GitHub has a limit for how much you can upload, and somebody else has to pull it, they will download 5 gigabytes of data. Maybe they will make 10 changes to the file and your next pull will download another 5 gigabytes of data to a total of 10 gigabytes. All that bandwidth, all that disk space, and you only need the latest changes, or maybe one of the developers doesn't even work on those files. For example, a coder who only needs the source code, not the binaries, but they will have to download everything. Besides, trying to compress and pack such big files will also take its time and it can get you in troubles, like running out of memory. And this is where the git large file storage comes to rescue and try to solve these issues. The cool thing is that you will still have a normal git repository that works with the same commands, except it will be smaller and faster thanks to the way git lfs handles those big files. When git lfs is installed for a repository, you have to let it know which files will be tracked by it. And two things will happen to the tracked files. One, they will not be compressed like git does normally, so you won't have to wait anymore for the compression to finish. And secondly, and this is the core feature of git lfs, the tracked files will not be pushed to the repository, but uploaded to a separate dedicated server that has the resources to handle them and your repository will only hold pointers to those files. As you see, only the pointer is hashed and stored here, while the big file is stored in the LFS folder and is not compressed. I'm going to make another change to that file and commit it again. It takes far less time to commit the changes with GitLFS. And the commits object is here. Now, if you want to push this repository to GitHub, you will have to use HTTPS because at this moment GitLFS doesn't work properly with SSH. The repository will be pushed to GitHub, but the big files will be moved to a separate Git LFS server and only referenced from our Git repository. and the GitHub will let you know which files have been stored with GitLFS. With this setup, if somebody clones your repository, they won't have to wait for the 10 gigabytes to download. They will only get the small files pointing to the big files and only the latest versions of the big files or they can pick whichever they need and download it. You can also retain only what you need with git lfs prune. Either way, only the last version of the object is here. So now you will have a smaller, more manageable repository 
that will also be faster to work with and faster to push to the remote server. Lastly, you can install your own LFS server if you have the hardware for storing the big files. I will put the link in the description. Like you saw, GitHub already supports GitLFS and it will automatically handle the big files tracked by it for free. So now you know what to do if you are dealing with a considerable amount of big binary files that slow down your workflow. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching and subscribe if you want to learn more coding related stuff.